All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Arafai Salamanca, and I'm the chair of the subcommittee on planning, dispositions, and concessions. I uh, want to welcome everyone to today's hearing. Uh, we are joined today by uh, Council Member Andy Cohen and Council Member Mark Traeger. Uh, we also have Council Member Inez Barron and Council Member uh, Eugene. Uh, today we will have two items on our calendar for vote, uh, LUs uh, 594, 595, and 596, the uh, Caton Flats development, and LUs 597 and 598 uh, at 210-214 uh, Hegeman Avenue, LU 604, the, uh, count, the Concourse Village West tax exemption application is being laid over. In the uh, Caton Flats application, DCAS and EDC seeks dispositions approval, a zoning map change, and a tax amendment creating a mandatory inclusionary housing area to facilitate the redevelopment of the Flatbush Caton Market at 794 Flatbush Avenue. This project is in Councilmember U Eugene's district. The site will be redeveloped with a new 14-story building that will include a 9,000 square foot market for local vendors, incubator space for businesses, community facility space, and 251 apartments. As a result of Council Member Eugene's negotiation, the project will now include a tier of 27 units affordable at 37% AMI. Previously, the lowest proposed affordability level was 47% AMI. An offset temporary market at Clarendon Road will house the vendors during the construction period with moving expenses and one year of free rent provided by the developer. EDC and the new market manager, Urbain Development, have pledged to continue to work with Council Member Eugene and the market vendors to reach consensus on guidelines for the new market and protections for existing legacy vendors. In the Hegeman Avenue application, HPD is seeking Urban Development Action Area Project, UDAP, designation and approval, disposition approval, and a special permit pursuant to ZR Section 74-903, to permit community facilities, FAR, to apply to a not-for-profit institution with sleeping accommodations. These actions will facilitate the development of an eight-story affordable and supportive housing building with, with on-site social services and security. The development will have 42 units available for formerly homeless individuals and 28 units available to individuals with income ranging from 27% to 60% of the area medium income. The building will include 24-7 security and on-site social services. The project is in Council Member Barron's district. Uh, so with that, we're going to hear two statements, and the first statement will be from Council Member Eugene. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you so very much for your leadership and your assistance also in negotiating for deeper affordability. Thank you so very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Matthew Eugene, and I'm, and I'm the council member representing District 40, which includes the Caden Flat Bush uh, uh, Market. It is very important to see that uh, this project come to a vote uh, before the subcommittee this afternoon because we have been working uh, to find a way to expand and renovate the market for many years. The new expanded home for the market will include a commercial kitchen and business incubator for the vendors, as well as the permanent home for Kaki, Caribbean American Chamber of Commerce, on the second floor, in addition to the market, the community will benefit from 251 new units of affordable housing. And I would like to take a moment to tell you briefly how far this project has has come. Years ago, when the development was proposed, I let out condition I had uh, for the project. I wanted to see deeper affordability and uh, the housing proportion of the project so that the people who live in my district could afford to live in the apartment they were building. I wanted to see also protection for the vendors who have been in the market for many years and who helped create the market to ensure that they were not priced out by rising rent or forced out by the stress of moving during the construction. I also wanted to ensure that the project would create some economic benefit 
for people living in my district and also in the community. Over the past years, I have fought hard for this project to be fair to the people of my district and the community. And it is because of the developers who are able to make uh, this adjustment that we are voting on this project today. When the project was originally proposed, 80% of the unit were going to be allot allotted to those making over $80,000 a year. Working together with the developers and ADC, HPD, and the Land Use uh, Committee or the Department, we were able to drastically increase the affordability of unit in the building and provide a much wider range of affordability with more units available for those making between 25000 and 35000 per year. When the project was proposed, the current vendors were not going to be protected. Working with the developers in EDC, we succeed. We secure the current vendors' affordable rent in the new space, as well as free rent for one year in the temporary space where they can sell their goods while they're there and the, while the new market is under construction. Additionally, urban development will cover the moving ex expenses, making sure that the long-term vendors who build the market are, are able to thrive in the new market is very important to all of us. I also want to make sure that the vendors, the developer, does everything possible to make economic opportunities available to the residents of my district and also the community. They are going to do outreach to local qualified workers and suppliers to inform them about opportunities related to the new kitten flat market so that they can hire workers and buy supplies within the community. Despite the progress we have made on this project, there's work still to be done. And I want to make, very, to make it very clear that today's vote is not the end of this process. It is just the beginning. Our vote today is the beginning of us working together, the developer, EDC, HPD, myself, and all the partners to make sure that the current vendors are protected, that the rules of the new market are fair, and that the project provides real economic benefit to my district. The current market is a cornerstone of the community, and I'm going to work with the developers, EDC, and the partners and the vendors to ensure that the new building benefit the community for many years to come. I would like to thank the chair of the subcommittee on planning and disposition and concession, Councilmember Rafael Salamanca, and also I would like to thank all the members of the subcommittee, and especially Councilmember David Greenfield for his advice and his uh, collaboration while I was fighting for affordable, more affordability. I would like also to thank all the, the people, everyone, all of you who have been part of this effort, especially uh, Raju Man, Brian Paul, and uh, Dylan Kessy from the City Council and News. And I want to thank also my uh, legislative di 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 uh, director, Ethan Tucker, and Adam, and to all of you who have been part of this process, it has been a long process. We fought, we shake hands, and I think that we get to a good result, and that is going to make a difference on the life of so many people in my district, and I congratulate each one and all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Council Member. I uh, just want to recognize that we've been joined by Chair David Greenfield and our Council Member Darlene Neely. Uh, with that, I'm going to hand it off to Council Member Barron. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I want to first thank all of those who were working on coming to some resolution on this project, which will be located in my district at 210 Hegeman Avenue. 
it is a project that has been on the drawing board for a while. And I do want to say that I had several concerns that were addressed by the developer to correct what I saw with some inadequacy. So the project was 100% affordable. That's always good. That's always good news. But I wanted to see income bans so that we could guarantee that there was not a, a conglomeration of people at the upper ends that would be qualified. So the developer did establish income bans, and we have bans at 27%, 37%, 47%, and 57%. 57%. So that's quite um, impressive, and that's quite commendable. The building is eight stories, which many of you know is higher than what I think is appropriate based on where the location is. The surrounding buildings there are four and six stories, and there are private homes that will be adjoining this building. But the project calls for homes for homeless, formerly homeless persons. So half of those units will be for, 42 of the units will be for people, 40 of the units will be for people with which DHS has designated has special needs. So there will be on-site services that will be provided for them. There'll be a case manager. There'll be a financial literacy person. There'll be job training and education skill building. And there'll be access to health and employment. So all of that is great. Uh, in addition to establishing income bans and the on-site services, the developer did respond to concerns that I had in the facade of the building. All of the buildings in that community are brick, and they had a brick and something else, and it was the something else that I did not really uh, think was in keeping with the establishment of the other buildings, and they have addressed that issue as well. So my reluctance came in as much as this was a unit that had all studios. And I know we have a burgeoning homeless shelter population and that we need to move people out of temporary shelters into permanent housing. But I don't think that moving an individual into a unit that is approximately 300 square feet as a studio uh, really gives recognition to the dignity that people are deserving of. Uh, I was told that there wasn't any way at this point to make that adjustment to improve, increase rather, the size of the studio apartment. And I did go and visit other units that this developer has created, and I was quite pleased to see the amenities and the quality of the establish of the uh, furnishings that were provided. And they do provide a bed, and they do provide uh, closet space, and they do provide the table and a desk as well. So it's very well thought out. So my reluctance, once again, was that this was a project that did not include an opportunity for children who were in, fam in families living in shelter to have an opportunity to move out of shelter and the size of the unit. So it is with those reluctance, but with the letter that I have received from the commissioner that they are aware of these concerns and moving forward, um, they will be addressed in other projects that are coming forward. And so whatever the word is that's the opposite of setting a precedent, uh, this, this project is the last of whatever's coming into my district at this size. And that's the end of it. That's the death of it. There'll be no more that I will consider that are coming in at 300 square feet. And we're looking to also make sure that there's a mix of uh, family units along with studio units that are coming in. So I do want to thank everyone who worked on this project. Again, all of the considerations that were made to the concerns that I had and realizing that community board approved it, borough president approved it, and there will at least be 70 less people, uh, well, 48 less people coming, uh, living in a shelter because they'll be coming to live here. And the assurance that at least 50% of the affordable units that will remain will be made available to those living in community district 16, community board 16, and uh, that people will have a decent place to leave, even though it is very small. So I do recommend a vote of yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, council member. 
Uh, now I will move to a vote to approve LUs 594, 595, 596, 597, and uh, 598. So council, please call the roll. Vote to approve LUs 494, 495, 594, 595, 596, 597, and 598. Um, and to file 604. Chair Salamanca. Aye. Councilmember Mealy. May I explain my vote? I just want to um, take the time out to say congratulations to Matthew Jean, that Khaki now have a, a safe haven, their space now. And the um, flea market is protected. I hope it stay protected for future endeavors that they do. We have a lot of them that start and then they weed them out. I hope we have a, a plan to make sure that they stay and um, progress. And I want to thank my colleague Inez um, Dickin Barron in regards to her uh, project. But I think things are really going to a point that a lot of developers are coming in just doing one studio apartment. I feel 300 square feet is not good for anyone, so I hope, and I concur with her that this should be the last one coming into Brownsville, and I vote aye on all. I uh, just want to correct, I think I said to, to file 604, and I meant to say layover 604. Um, Council Member Traeger. Uh, with congratulations to my colleague, Councilmember Eugene, and a uh, point very well taken by Councilmember Barron because it's not just about uh, affordability, it's also about quality. Mm -hmm. Families deserve to live in dignity and, and respect. Uh, so I, I do vote, vote aye on all. Thank you. The vote is approved by a vote of three in the affirmative, zero negatives, and zero abstentions, and referred to the full land use committee. Uh, yes, we're going to leave the uh, roll open for about 15 minutes, uh, but before we step out, uh, Councilman Barron just wants to say a few words. Yes, I want to thank my colleagues. I do want to add the other attractive fe feature was that there was a 50-year regulatory agreement for the project, so that was another positive. Thank you. Awesome. So I would like to thank uh, the members of the public, my colleagues, council and land use staff for attending today's hearing, and we will leave the roll open uh, for about 15 minutes for the other members to come and vote. Thank you. Thank you.